Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to my channel. My name is Paul, the Canadian Snowman, here with some more geography now. We have just did Haiti, and now we're moving on to Honduras. Uh, yeah, Honduras. Uh, Honduras. I don't, I don't, don't, don't know much. Don't know much. Uh, so... We're just going to jump right into this because I have nothing else really to say because I don't know what I'm talking about. So, come on, Honduras. Give me something good here. Give me something good. Before we do, please hit that like and subscribe button. Please and thank you. And doo -doo -doo. hope you guys are having a great day. If you're from Honduras, uh, definitely let me know in the comments. Just say, hey, what's up? I'm from Honduras. Or just say, I'm from Honduras, you know? It's always kind of cool to see, you know, when I do these videos, you know, if people from that country actually watch this video. So, <laughs> definitely let me know. Anyways, hit like and subscribe. And we're going to push play. Three, two, one, bam. Guys, I'm not going to make any puns in this episode. At this point, for Geography Now, cheesy stuff like that is just under us. Oh, my God. <laughs> It's time to learn geography now! Hey everybody, I'm your host Barbie. Central America is a little tricky because on the surface, it looks like opening up a bag of potato chips. When you first look in, they all look like potato chips. But then when you inspect them a little closer, you realize some are a little bigger, some are a little crispier, some are burned, some have a little bit of green. And that's my job, to eat potato chips. What? What are we talking about? No idea what you're talking about. Ah, I love this part of the video because it reveals all the secrets to the country, and Honduras has quite a few. First of all, Honduras is located in Central America, sandwiched between Guatemala and El Salvador on the west, and Nicaragua to the southeast. Honduras is also a bi-coastal country with both coasts on the Caribbean Sea and a small but still existent patch of Pacific Ocean in the south in the Gulf of Fonseca. The country is divided into 18 departments, and the capital, Tegucigalpa, is located right in the central Francisco Morazan department. The country has four international airports, and the largest and busiest one is actually not in Tegucigalpa, but Ramon. Villeda Morales International, located in San Pedro Sula. I mean, if you want, you can fly to Tegucigalpa's Toncontin International, but it's kind of like dubbed as the second most dangerous airport in the world due to its horrible location wedged between dangerous mountains with choppy winds and a narrow runway. It's actually not uncommon to see passengers praying before landing. They know what they're getting themselves into. In addition to this, I actually think I've seen a YouTube video on this. Um, it, it might not have been uh, this country, but like I remember seeing parts of a youtube video to where it was like most dangerous airports and and what i remember one saying something about like a mountain or a hill it's got to go over before it comes down so dang that's pretty scary stuff so i'm assuming like tourists don't go to that airport or maybe they do they because they just don't know you know the danger maybe so they they don't realize it so they go there and don't think nothing of it i'm guessing maybe but uh maybe if you live there you're either used to it or you probably use another airport. I don't know. Maybe you guys can let me know. <laughs> it's actually not uncommon to see passengers praying before landing. They know what they're getting themselves into. In addition to the departments, as of 2013, Honduras just instituted a new economic zone division, much like what China did with their zones, in which certain cities will have a distinct free market capitalistic function with high autonomy ruled by their own political and judicial systems. Right now, it seems like Amalpa on Tigre Island will be the first to become an autonomous zone. Others are on the way, but it's a little too early to tell which ones will be exclusive. This has been taken in with both hmm. praise and criticism. Praise, because based off of your economic philosophy, it could boost revenue, but criticism because it comes at a cost of your own sovereignty being put in the hands of corporations. It's kind of like, yeah. so if I give you these cities, you promise it'll all trickle down to us, right? Oh, yes. All I ask is that you give me the authority to tell them what to do. <laughs> Why are you laughing like that? <laughs> uh, I still don't like the way you're laughing. But at least I made money! Besides all that, Honduras lays claim to about 20 or so islands, most in the Caribbean, and in the south of Honduras, they were like, okay, I'll take these four, and El Salvador, you can take these four. The most notable islands, huh. though, would be the famous Islas de Bahia, made up of Roatan, Utila, and Wanaha, which has Bonaca Key, the most crowded island in Honduras. Wow. In addition, you have the Cochino Keys, jump a little further east, and you have the Swan Islands, and if you jump even further north, on that crowd island, though, man, you must know all your neighbors, I bet. You know, and everyone kind of, is kind of like family. You probably just, like, walk through someone's house to get to your house. And I don't know. I don't know. Maybe you all probably have cool barbecues and stuff like that. No? Yeah, maybe? I don't know. Interesting, though.
Vision, you have the Cochino Keys, jump a little further east, and you have the Swan Islands. And if you jump even further north, you hit the completely submerged Misterioso and Rosario banks that lie within Honduras' exclusive economic zone. Most of the population stays in the west and south areas of the country. In fact, most of the areas along the border with Nicaragua are uninhabited and empty. Otherwise, some notable sites might include places like the Copan Mayan ruins with hieroglyphic Whoa. staircases and Mayan ball courts, as well as the Rosalia, a fully replicated Mayan temple, the El Puente ruins, San Cristobal Fort in Gracias and the Baroque style churches of Tegucigalpa and Comayawa, Bay nice. Islands Underwater Museum, the Cave of Glowing Skulls, and see if you can find the legendary White City or the City of the Monkey God. So I'm assuming like the Underwater Museum, you know, a lot of tourists probably go and, uh, you know, they go scuba diving with a tour guide, something like that, or maybe, they may not tour guide, just, just like people go like, you know, maybe snorkeling, I don't know, but damn, I, don't, I don't think I've ever heard of that before, ever. Underwater museum. Back to Cave of Glowing Skulls. Okay. Cave of Glowing Skulls? And see if you can find the legendary White City or the City of the Monkey God, which is rumored to be hidden somewhere in the jungles of the East. What else can you find huh. in the jungles of the East? Jungles, which we will discuss in... Geography? Now, in the simplest way I can put this, when it comes to natural catastrophe, Honduras was kind of like... Thanks. I just don't want to get my hair messed up. Yeah, sure. No problem. Yeah, El Salvador is kind of like Honduras' shield that takes all the crazy earthquakes and volcano eruptions, leaving them with just a smidge of debris and weak aftershock. First of all, the country is divided into five general geographic land zones. The Insular Bay Islands, the North Atlantic Coast, the heavily populated Occidental Sula Lowlands, and the largest wilderness area in all of Central America, the La Mosquita Jungles in the East, as well as the Pacific South Volcanic Region. By the way, quick little side note, Occidental means West, and the antonym Oriental means East. And now you know. Inside the La Mosquita, you can find the UNESCO World Heritage site the Rio Platano Biosphere Reserve which has like the highest concentration of wildlife like the national animals the scarlet macaw and the white-tailed deer. Now other than a few fertile valleys and plains along the coast most of Honduras is mountainous at about 80 percent. Here you can find the highest peak the Cerro Las Minas located in the west. Now this means that even though the land is rich and lush with vegetation less than 10 percent of the land is arable. Now when it comes to water although the Coco River is the longest winding south to north the Ulua River is the most important as it goes from the Sula Valley to the Caribbean allowing transport and trade. Right next door, you can find ah. the largest natural lake, Yohoa, which actually sits inside a volcanic depression. And speaking of volcanoes, in the south, you can find the two most notable volcanoes, Isla Sacate Grande and Isla El Tigre. Hondurans love food. Even though most Central Americans admit that they do kind of have a similar base culinary structure, Hondurans do have a slight jungle charm. Popular dishes include things like the national dish, baleatas, cassabe, canecho soup, mondongo, hocote mm. and miel, pollo chucho, and some people, especially in the indigenous community, enjoy iguana and turtle eggs. Otherwise, why some top natural spots include places okay. like Pulapansac Waterfalls, Cuevas de Talgua, Pico Bonito National Park, Cayos Cochinos. Wow. During the rainy season, see if you can make it to the Lluvia de Peces. One second. That brilliant. Pico Bonito National Park, Cayos Cochinos. Man, that's pretty. How blue that water is, man. That'd be nice to vacation there. Wow. You got cool volcanoes to check out. You got like the Mayan ruins. Caves, skulls, museums underwater. Dang, man. <laughs> And during the rainy season, see if you can make it to the Lluvia de Peces in Yoro, a weird natural phenomena in which every year it rains fish. Like, I'm not even joking. After it rains, the streets are loaded with live squirming fish. Some people think it might be caused by underground waterways opening up, and some people think it's because water what? spouts suck up the fish from the water, making a fish nado, dropping them on the towns below. So there you go. If there's one thing you're going to take away from this episode, it's that Honduras has fish nados. Totally fact, not embellished in any way. Moving on. Okay, the fish. So I'm assuming, you know, when it floods, you know, fish are able to get kind of, I guess, get in there. And become, I don't know. But I guess that, you know, when you know you're going to get yourself a free meal, like, are they edible? Like, are they not, like, contaminated or anything, right? Like, that'd be kind of cool. You mean, uh, you have a storm, and then afterwards, everyone runs to the street and kind of, like, throws all their fish in a freezer, and then you're good. You're good for a while. Yeah, you don't even, ha you even have to go to the market or go fishing. Is that like a thing or I don't know. Maybe you guys, once again, maybe, maybe you guys let me know, man, you guys got some cool, cool, crazy stuff going on over there, man. That's exciting. Seriously though, fish natos. Can you imagine just sitting there and like, oh, 
Anyway, the country has about 8.2 million people and has the highest percentage of Protestants per capita out of all Latin American countries. About 90% of the country is mestizo, about 7% are Amerindian, 2% are black, mostly Garifunas along the Caribbean coast, and the remainder is mostly made up of whites with a few Arab, Christians, and Chinese mixed in there as well. Also, they use the Honduran Lempira as their currency, they use the A and B plug outlets, and they drive on the right side of the road. Of the Amerindian community, there are six main subgroups, each with their own traditions and languages, except for the largest group, the Lenca, whom have all but lost their native language as it went extinct in the 70s. Now here lies the big question. How is Honduras different from all the other Latin American countries? I mean, aren't they all the same? Don't they all like speak Spanish and eat tacos and stuff? Well, that couldn't be a more ignorant statement, despite the fact that yes, Hondurans do like tacos and they do speak Spanish. First of all, Hondurans, or catrachos as they like to be called sometimes, do have their own distinct quirks. For one, as mentioned before, Honduras is the most Protestant out of all the Latin American countries. Most estimates put the number at somewhere around 40% of the country adhering to some denomination of the faith branch. Otherwise, Catholics make up the majority of the remaining religious community with a few small communities of Jews and Muslims. And there's probably like a Chinese Buddhist in there somewhere too. I mean, there's always like a few small groups of Chinese people in every country in the world. Even Somalia has Chinese people. Hondurans do have a few distinct Honduran words like mahe, geonda, sipota or sipote, vayapues, cheque, and andoule. Speaking of words, Honduras like Costa Rica is very bilingual in Spanish and English. Kids are taught in elementary schools and in fact some estimate that almost half of the entire city of San Pedro Sula is proficient enough in English to hold a normal conversation. The US nice. outsource hundreds of people there in call centers to speak to U.S. customers. English, whether you like learning it or not, it's the money-making language. Quick history! Like all the other Central American countries, Honduras kind of had like three independences. One from Spain, one from Mexico, and one from the Federal Republic of Central America. Then about 300 small internal rebellions and civil wars occurred. Then in the 60s, they had a war with El Salvador that was basically started by a soccer match. Then in the 70s, civilian rule returned and things were looking up. Then Hurricane Mitch messed everything up. Then in 2009, a very soft... A war by a soccer match. I think I actually uh, did a video on that. From it might have, was it oversimplified. It might not. It might, not been, it might have been a different channel. But if I remember correctly, you know, I did a video on that, <laughs> and it, it lasted. It was a very short war too. I, mean, I love how videos overlap that I do. Civilian rule returned and things were looking up. Then Hurricane Mitch messed everything up. Then in 2009, a very soft coup d'etat happened, and that's where we stand today. So essentially, this is where we get all the gritty stuff. Yes, Honduras, although speckled with beauty and extremely welcoming, nice people, is riddled with a sinister dark side. Yes, Honduras has one of the highest intentional murder rates in the world outside of a war torn country. This is mostly attributed to the drug trafficking problem. About 80% of the drugs entering into the US will at some point cross through Honduras by cartels. Yeah. Everyday citizens typically witness drug trucks transporting supplies however they just kind of live by the keep your mouth shut and mind your own business rule nobody will be bothered and keep in mind you're going to see a lot of this type of stuff in other latin american countries it's kind of like a strange shady bilateral government mafia type of coalition thing that shouldn't exist but they don't know how to get out of it so they just kind of leave it as it is and try not to get involved but then a new government comes up and rises and tries to get involved and then just causes more trouble it's like nobody can win Man, Latin America, I'm really starting to I mean, kind of understand your plight. Man, people, stop buying drugs. It's like, just buy a puppy and play with it. That's like the equivalent of 40 drugs in one on steroids. Quote me on that. <laughs> anyway, some notable people of... So basically, just turn a blind eye. You know, it, it's just less drama. Just turn a blind eye. Let, let it go on and go on your daily business. Pretty much, right? You know? Aw, cute puppy on steroids quote me on that Anyway, some notable people of Honduran descent throughout history might include national heroes Francisco Morazan and Lempira, Sir Salvador Moncada, Roberto Sosa, America Ferreira, Guillermo Anderson, Polache, Luis Moncada, David Suazo, and activist Berta Caceres. And now we reach Honduras' diplomacy, but before we do, let me just emphasize this one thing. Do not call Hondurans Mexicans, okay? Moving on. I would I. Now, if Central America was a family, Honduras would kind of be like the street smart middle brother that always pays rent even though you have no idea where he works and he has like a little twitch in his eye because he's trying to suppress all of the baggage that he covers up by singing karaoke every night. Wow, that was an extensive description. First of all, Honduras is one of the 20 countries that recognizes Taiwan's statehood over the People's Republic of China. Like Guatemala, Taiwan holds tight to Honduras as it is one of their largest supporters in trade and diplomacy. The U.S. is not only the largest business partner, but also one out of every 10 Hondurans in the world live in the U.S with New Orleans housing the largest community. This, in return, provides a portion of remittance money that gets sent back to relatives. Colombia is like the cool cousin across the sea that they look up to, and they like Cuba because they send a lot of doctors. Cuba, you're always sending doctors to everybody. You're like a doctor right? machine, dispensing doctors. Doctor, doctor, doc, doctor, pepper! 
it's so true because then I just do Haiti and they, they just mention the same thing. They send doctors. So, damn, Cuba kicking butt with like in the medical field. Whew. You know, they're just trying to give back. Everybody. You're like a doctor vending machine, dispensing doctors, doctor, doctor, doc, doctor yeah. pepper. Now, when it comes to the best friends, though, almost all you Honduran geography peeps that I talked to have told me that Guatemala was your number one, whereas El Salvador and Nicaragua were a very close second place. Hondurans admire Guatemala's culture, and they're a little envious that they get all of the cool Mayan stuff. They have open border policies, and many people from both countries end up marrying each other. El Salvador and Nicaragua are kind of like the two troublesome younger fraternal twin brothers that sometimes cause them a little bit of a headache. But in the end, they turn on the karaoke machine and sing together. In conclusion. If Central America was the Brady Bunch, Honduras would totally be Jan, the mild-mannered but internally angsty middle child with fish nados. Stay tuned. <laughs> Hungary is... Oh, man. My chime card arrived today. Cool envelope. Wow. Fish nados. That is friggin' awesome. That'd be, that'd be awesome if that was actually like, true. But anyways, guys, let me know about all those cool facts, you know, all those cool things, you know, if it's true or not. I don't know, like, me, if you live there, maybe if you've done, have you guys done a bunch of this cool stuff that I mentioned that were in the video? Because, man, you have definitely one of the most interesting companies when it comes to these videos about the stuff they mentioned, hands down, one of the most. So you're definitely up there with, like, all that cool stuff. And it seems like a bunch of cool people have a lot of fun. Bunch of interesting, interesting sites to go to. You just gotta like, just ignore like, like the, the drug trucks that go by. Ah, that's cool. We got cool caves, man. Don't worry about the trucks. But anyways, guys, uh, please hit that like and subscribe button. Thank you for watching, and I'll definitely catch you guys in future videos. Doing every country in the world, alphabetical order. And uh, yeah, you guys have a great night, great day, or, or whatever time of day it is you're watching this. But anyways, peace, and catch you guys in future videos.